still think it's a great way to start a project with a, with a pencil and a bit of paper and just flesh out some ideas quickly of, of what I want to make. For this project I wanted something simple like a glide bait because the materials I'm using are quite new to me and I'm still learning a bit about them. Taking an idea or a sketch and redrawing it with CAD can sometimes feel a bit like taking the kind of soul out of, out of the learn. But to be honest, computer aided design is such a, um, an amazing tool. It, it kind of lends an accuracy. It gives me a kind of measure or a yardstick to work to. Um, and I can make adjustments, limitless adjustments, copy and paste without redrawing, and also produce templates to work from. When it kind of feels like I've got a working drawing, it's time to get in the shop and start the build. For this project, I'm using softwood. This is reclaimed skirting board. It's probably about half an inch thick and probably pine if not spruce. To give me a line to work to, I've stuck my paper template to the board and then I can get to work with the bandsaw. Rather than cut it all out, I'm leaving it attached by the tail end to make it easy for me to handle later. Unusually for a layer build, I need to sort out the finish before I've completed shaping the layer. And the material I'm using for this is sometimes sold as silver carbon fibre, but it's actually glass fibre with spun aluminium in it, which gives it this amazing pattern, and obviously the sheen. The downside of this reinforcement is it's really quite delicate until it's been embedded in some kind of resin, like epoxy. To give me a working surface, I'm using a piece of polypropylene. This is incredibly smooth and also there's not a lot that sticks to polypropylene, including epoxy resin, so it acts as a kind of mould. And I'm mixing up a batch of Envirotex, which is a, a two-part epoxy, uh, which has got a very low viscosity and dries crystal clear. This is really a resin that needs to be mixed thoroughly and I've given this a couple of minutes before pouring it out onto my surface. Although it does self-level, I've given myself a bit of a helping hand with the glue spreader. And then once I've kind of got the area covered that I need to, I can give it a blast with a blow lamp. And what this does is just pop the bubbles that get trapped in the surface film. And once I'm happy, I can cover it up with a bit of Tupperware and leave it for a few hours to set up. After four to five hours, I can test the resin with my finger. If it's still tacky but I can peel my finger away, then it's ready for the reinforcement. I find laying down the fabric probably the most nerve-wracking part of the process. This is really a one-shot deal and if it goes down with a crease or I've got it out of position, it's not really coming back off. But when it's all good, I can mix up another batch of epoxy. Then when I've poured the resin, I really need to carefully wet out the cloth. It should kind of go translucent and the background colour, in this case green, should come through. I tend to really overdo the wetting out part, but at the end I can always scrape off any excess resin. And then as before, give it a treatment with the blower lamp, before leaving it to cure. Like a lot of epoxies, Envirotex can take up to a day to harden up enough to handle. But once it has, removing it from the plastic backing can be as easy as giving it a little flex or bend. This is really when I get to find out if the shiny plastic mould surface has really paid off. And if it all comes good, I end up with a glass-like finish, but also the reinforcement has a kind of holographic quality. To get the sheet ready to cover the layer, I've cut out a pair of handed templates that I've printed off. And I'm going to stick them down with some scotch tape.
and then with some general purpose scissors I can cut roughly to the line although this will be trimmed up neater a little later Cutting the sheet with just ordinary scissors can be quite tough but with a little care I should end up with two handed sides To prepare the layer body for the sides I've given it a going over with some 100 grit sandpaper to remove the bits of paint and the bandsaw marks. For the epoxy sides I'm using some wet and dry paper to roughen up the surface for gluing. And rather than using Virotex again, I'm mixing up some thicker 5 minute epoxy as an adhesive. This is just spread as an even coat on the wood. And then I can position the side with the rough surface facing down and keep it in position temporarily with some scotch tape. Finally to add a bit of even pressure I'm using an old flat iron as a weight. When both sides have been glued down and the epoxy had a bit of a chance to set up I can get back into the shop and pull out the router. I'm setting up with a quarter round over bit at a depth to give me a nice shape on the edge of the layer. To hold the body and tail in position and give me a flat surface for the router to ride on, I'm clamping it in between two scrap pieces of wood and these are the same thickness as the layer, then I can position the router for the cut, push down to depth and begin to shape. I find the real magic of this method is the bearing guide which follows the outline without too much pressure or input from me. And when one side's complete, I can just turn over. To create the back of the layer, I'm back with the bandsaw and with a quick cut I can separate it from the tail. And then with some sandpaper and a block of wood, I can shape the round over on the back by hand. To finish the work in the shop for this project, I've marked out the hook hangers and the belly weight positions. And then it's just a case of drilling them out. That's really all of the build I'm going to cover in this video. In the next video I'll deal with finishing the layer and hopefully doing a bit of pike fishing. If you'd like a crack at building your own, there will be a PDF with plans available in the next video. To end with, I've tagged on a couple of clips from testing the prototype and also my previous project, the Uber Grub. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to share, tweet, twerk, that's a new one, and subscribe, or follow the link to my channel for more layer making videos. Thanks for watching.